So in the world of wrestling, things are always changing and evolving, whether it be the companies, what's allowed, what's been disallowed, just the way general things are performed, the way it's recorded, we're always seeing the evolution. But one thing that always stands out to me as a long time wrestling fan is when they nerf moves that used to be considered absolutely deadly. So welcome to the Geek Box guys. Today we're going to be doing my top 10 nerfed moves in wrestling. Starting us off at number 10 is the spear. Now if you think back to the history of the spear, even if you didn't go decades and decades back, you think of people like Goldberg, people like Edge, just nailing that spear and finishing off those matches. Whereas now we see so many stars that use the spear as a transitional move or just a quick rip moment in the middle of a match. I think the only person I can think of now at the top which still uses the spear as that iconic devastating finish to whatever match they're in is Roman Reigns. I mean, even though it's been picked up as well by, say, Jay, who's been using the spear, who's won some matches with it, but... It just doesn't have the devastation behind it and a lot of the time it still gets kicked out of as just being used as simple as a normal handlock or anything. It's just not the sort of move that when it gets hit you know it's over. So the spear definitely had to start the list off. The sleeper hold is in at number 9. Now obviously this is a much more old school regiment thing. I'd say more in the 80s especially. In the 90s the sleeper hold became more of a transitional move but was still used quite often to take down especially much bigger opponents and even if it didn't finish the match it left them on the floor susceptible to whatever finish was coming. But I think in recent years we've seen the case of the sleeper hold even though it's been used less these days I think it now has no sort of quality in the match it slows the match down so they can catch their breath for a bit and then they're back to normal whereas as you know if you have been locked in a proper choke hold or a proper sleeper hold for like a good 30 seconds to a minute like they do in a lot of these matches now when they use the sleeper hold it leaves you messed up for a good while so the sleeper hold just seems to have been completely nerfed away from the whole point of that move being used the figure four leg lock now of course iconically for the figure four leg lock you think of rick flair now obviously the figure four has been unused by so many other classic stars throughout time but i think rick flair was one of the people that really brought the figure four out into the spotlight as a main move being used and it was the deadliest like top range type submission hold it was a case of once you were rocked into that figure four leg lock you were stuck in it you could rock you could roll but the figure four was going to finish you off and if it didn't finish you off it left your legs so damaged that you couldn't finish the match properly anyway and i think the only person since then i've really seen that tried to bring the figure four leg lock back properly was the miz and i thought he had a great figure four leg lock he could slap it in in a second once he got it down. It was absolutely great. But other people have used it. It's Again, it's just been nerfed because it's always done in the same thing now. The figure four gets locked in. They roll around for about 10 seconds. And then the person rolls over, reverses the pressure of the figure four. And then they either have to break the hold or someone interferes. So for such an iconic move that really used to make that huge difference in like some of the biggest matches there was the figure four has just been watered down and it's quite sad to see because i think the figure four is an amazing move to actually watch be done in the ring especially when it just suddenly gets slapped on in the middle of a whole load of other scuffle but had to be in the list so in at number seven the sharpshooter now similar to like the figure four leg lock in this one obviously the sharpshooter you think Brat Hart first or do you think of Stinger doing 
obviously the original the scorpion deathlock it's again a move that when it got locked on it was used and it ripped people up and i think so many people have used it since pretty much it seemed to be if you're canadian you're supposed to use it at some point if you've had some sort of interface with the heart family you're supposed to use it and it's just it's just not a move you don't see a sharpshooter and think they're going to tap out i think the worst culprit for this over time is actually the rock for it apart from the fact that most of the time whenever you put a sharpshooter on it didn't look like he even was doing anything apart from just holding onto their ankles just about to keep it in place but i cannot remember the last time i saw a sharpshooter and actually genuinely believed it was going to finish the match off now it may have been done I think there are some guys in the indies that I've seen videos of that are still using it and the sharpshooter is considered to be deadly for them but generally the sharpshooter it just doesn't have that mystical edge that it once had. The top rope elbow drop. This is one that really annoys me because of the fact that if you're jumping and throwing your body weight on top of somebody it used to be a case of it crushed you and you were done. I mean, Randy Savage, to me, was like the sweetest elbow drop of all time. I think the what we have, the modern day equivalent, that when you see it makes me pop, is when you see Kyrie Sane drop her insane elbow drop, because she does that absolutely beautiful. But there's a lot of people that use the elbow drops now, but it's just a transitional move now. Like, you see people doing elbow drops through tables, um, from like massive heights and the other person's back on their feet fighting back 30 seconds later if not sooner it's just i mean thinking of the concept of somebody actually dropping from a height with their body weight behind it and driving their bony elbow into your chest you would not be jumping back up two seconds after that in that same vein we have the superplex now I remember in the 90s, the superplex becoming quite popular at one point, but it was a like last three or four minutes of the match move because if you got hit by a superplex, you were either losing the match or you were going to be left outside the ring for a long time to recover whilst all the other spots were done. So it was used quite often in tag team matches, etc. But the superplex, the idea of being lifted above the height of the ring and then slammed into the floor was supposed to absolutely destroy you and then again it become one of those moves i think the most frustrating version of it is probably from guys like seth rollins now who they'll hit somebody into a superplex and then they'll pick them straight back up and then they'll do something else like uh, they'll move it into like the falcon arrow or the blue thunderbomb that's what I've seen it turned into. Where it used to be the superplex, it took you both out for the count for a minute. It's just it was supposed to hurt the other person more than you because you were falling from the top rope flat. So at some point, the superplex stopped being so super. Sticking with moves that aren't being super anymore, the super kick. Now, so many guys have used the super kick over the years to great effect. Obviously, Shawn Michaels comes first to mind switching music and also i think of people like lance storm who lance storm had one of the wicked super kicks possible and even then if it wasn't a finishing move back in the 80s and the 90s the super kick dropped your ass fast and it, it was a setup for the finish of the match if it wasn't the finish of the match whereas for some reason now the super kick it's it literally it makes contact and you're back up and fighting again two seconds later it's it's being used by so many people and still is now it's just overused to the fact that the idea of being kicked in the chin apparently isn't devastating anymore which is ridiculous because the whole idea was the idea that if a punch would knock you out a kick would send your head into next week for number three the canadian destroyer somewhere along the line i didn't see a canadian destroyer be done for years and i'm gonna guess that's because i know so many places banned it now it's come back over the last few years and i haven't seen a single person win a match with it 
The Canadian Destroyer used to be one of those moves that was so stupidly deadly that most people didn't want to attempt to do it anyway. And those that did, it would be a case of the Destroyer lived up to its name. You got hit by it, it was done. There was no ifs, ands or buts. The Canadian Destroyer finished the match, nearly broke your neck. It was considered only very, very, very talented wrestlers could pull that move off in the first place. So to see it be reduced to such a gimmick move now is quite sad as an old school wrestling fan. So that definitely had to be high up on this list. To win at number two is the DDT. Now, this is one I have always raged about because... I grew up as a Jake the Snake Roberts fan and that DDT when I watched that as a kid was, it made my teeth clench seeing it. It was the idea of after all that fighting, he just set you up, get you in snug and then just spike your head into the mat. It was just like the most horrendous thought that like if your mate did that to you, you'd go to hospital probably. So all these variations of DDT have come out since. You obviously you've got like the snap DDT, you've got off the ropes like Orton does, the dragging DDT, you've got the tornado DDT. We've got all these variations of DDT, none of them are worth a damn anymore. They're now used more as a counteraction for when somebody whips you off the ropes and then bends down and you hit them with the DDT, obviously, like the Undertaker used to do a really beautiful version of that. But still, the DDT has just been completely turned to nothing. It might as well be a slap on the back of the head now, which is, like, to me, is ridiculous. I mean, even like you've got like Drew McIntyre doing a Future Shock DDT. It's great; it's still being used as the main move. But when was the last time you saw them actually win a match with that? It's generally a carryover to let you know that the Claymore is coming in the next few minutes. So yeah, the DDT is one of the most disappointing things I've seen be just completely nerfed in the wrestling industry of course in at number one it had to be the pile driver what the hell happened to the pile driver it was banned in most places and then it was really tightly protected about who could actually do a pile driver I mean even the old pool style pile drivers and then you've got going up spike pile drivers line pile drivers You've got obviously the infamous now Tombstone Power Driver. This move was literally designated as if you got hit with a Power Driver, you're dead. Your head's been slammed into the floor. You might be crippled. End of the story. Nothing. You do it on the outside. Game over. If you don't get them in the ring and pin them, then they'll stop the match. Whereas now the Power Driver is just used as like a transitional move, unless. It's somebody who's iconic, like the Undertaker would tombstone power drive someone. End of the story now. That would be it. That would be his section done. But it's just sad to see that such like a naturally devastating move, like with the DDT, is driving your head into the floor. So with the power drive, your neck's getting pulled into it as well, has been turned into such a soft move now. Anyway, guys, that's my top 10 nerfed moves in wrestling list. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. What moves do you think have been nerfed over time that's upset you with it? And what moves do you think maybe should be nerfed in wrestling that are too overdone or overpowered now? Anyway, if you like the video, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Stay up then. All the latest content the channel has to offer. Obviously, that includes these top 10 lists, gaming challenges. Like I just posted one up if you haven't seen them already. Can you complete Fallout New Vegas as Arthur Morgan? And of course, as always, my wrestling compilation videos. You can see reactions from some of the greatest streamers there are following wrestling around the world. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all out there.